All right, guys. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Knife Face. This is going to be an uncut review. The first half will be non spoilers. I promise you that until, uh, let's say, the five minute to six minute mark, and then I will talk. Spoilers. So if you're not comfortable with that, please feel free to uh, leave, but come back for the spoiler talk if you've seen <sighs> Avengers Endgame. It finally happened. I saw it. Currently on vacation out of town, but that wasn't going to stop me from seeing it. You know, I planned ahead. I pre-bought my tickets from where I'm currently at right now. Opening night, 6 p.m. I was there <sighs> with a great crowd. All Marvel fans, all dying to see this film just like me. So the energy was at an all-time high, um, and it happened. Um, I'm just I, I have so many emotions. Okay, it's still not a spoiler, so don't worry. I will let you know. Like I said, um, I'm just gonna give you my. I'm gonna try to give you my overall thoughts. I'm gonna be very vague, not spoil anything. Okay. This is easily the best Marvel MCU film. Easily, I don't, I don't have to like marinate on it. I don't have to take a day, or you know, oh, I have to maybe rewatch it, which I am gonna do tomorrow, Friday. I'm X three D. I know. I just knew once once those credits roll, I saw something just so extraordinary. Um, of course, just just prepare yourself. Um, Prepare yourself if you've been a huge fan of this franchise since 2008, since the beginning of Iron Man. I'm telling you, just be prepared emotionally. <laughs> because I thought I wasn't, I wasn't, honestly. Oh, my God, it just... Whew, fuck. Man, so the, just the feels, I was just, I was a mess. <laughs> I was bawling like a baby. I haven't cried that hard since watching Logan. And, you, you know, Logan is my number one hold that film to such high esteem for what they did. And now I hold Avengers Endgame up there as one of the best comic book films ever made. Uh, I love it more than Infinity War. I don't even have to do a, a ranking because Infinity War will be two now and Avengers Endgame will be number one. It was the perfect love letter to all the fans that have just committed themselves by watching all these films been following all these characters, all their character arcs and their stories, just the way it was wrapped up was perfect. Um, you know, the three hour runtime, I kind of felt it a little bit, but it, it's not a big deal. It's, it's just a minor, would be a minor nitpick, honestly. I think they used the three hour runtime very well. I don't think there was a dull moment. I think it just left a lot of breathing room for all the characters to see where they were at, especially after the events of Infinity War, after the Thanos snap. And I really love that. I love the first act, the second act, and but that third act, my God, that finale is the most epic, monumental, holy shit, I can't believe this is happening! Uh, just last like hour of a movie that I've seen in quite a long time. I was just flabbergasted. I was, I was the on the edge of my seat. I, I just <laughs> like what the fuck. Like my mind is just misfiring. I'm just trying to process all this, guys. It's perfect to near perfect. Honestly, it's a ten out of ten. There's my score. It's a fucking ten out of ten. I mean, I, I can't wait to rewatch it again. Honestly, it just. They did justice to all the characters. They wrapped up every story arc and character arc perfectly, as as perfect as they could have. And kudos to the Russo brothers, Kevin Feige, round of applause, and the entire cast for just hitting yet again another home run, more so. I mean, you can easily see this as a, like, you know how Kill Bill 1 had the most action, and Kill Bill 2 had the resolution, same thing with Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah, so, I loved it. Go see it. Go support the film. 
It's worth your time. It's worth the three hours. Don't even get up to piss. Don't you you piss in that cup if you have to. You understand me? You you piss in that cup. Take one for the team. Fucking whatever it takes. Hashtag it. Live by it. Damn it. Because the Avengers will do the same for you. All right. <laughs> oh man, it just. Oh man, what? I don't know if I'm ready to talk about this movie in depth, but I'm going to try. We're still not at six minutes, so you're still good. What else can I say about it? I mean, shit. Don't miss out on this movie. Go see it. Please go see it. And don't spoil the movie for anyone who hasn't seen it. Don't 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 be a dick, you know? But don't spoil the end game. So, yeah. But I'm about to do it in four, three, two, one. Six minute mark. Spoiler talk. Spoiler talk. Spoiler warning to you all. Spoilers. <laughs> okay, now you're you're in it. All right, you're in the spoiler talk territory, and I will put it in the description below because I'm trying not to spoil for you guys. I love you guys. All right. Where do I even fucking begin? <laughs> oh my god. All right. Start at the beginning. Obviously, we're gonna start at the beginning. The from the opening credits, it really set the mood. Just like in Infinity War, when you know Thanos wiped out um, <laughs> Thor's ship and have all of Asgard and Loki and Heimdall and beat the shit out of the Hulk. It was like that, but it was more subtle. It was more like somber and quiet, and it really sank in and. It was a great way to reintroduce us to Hawkeye to see where he's going to be in this film. It's perfect. You know, you see him uh, teaching his daughter some archery skills, and she's she's a pro. You know, she's a little, little Hawkeye. <laughs> and his wife is in the background with his other kid. Then all of a sudden, he doesn't see it, but they're gone just because the, the snap happened. And it's haunting. And right there, you just you just feel for Hawkeye. This is the best I've ever seen. Jeremy Renner, oh, my God. His acting was incredible throughout. Oh, my God. I was so happy to see Hawkeye. And he's never been a character that, you know, I, was, I wasn't fully invested in. Up until Age of Ultron, then, I started finding him quite fascinating. There was a lot more layers to his character. But this, when he when, when they did that time jump, five years... He became Ronin and we got that awesome sword fight with that what with that fucking actor. What is his name? Um, shit, he's so good. That actor's so good. He was in the Wolverine, man. He's so and the Last Samurai. I love the Last Samurai. Yeah, he's good with swords. So it was perfect that scene. Ronin, um, <laughs> just just shred people like Deadpool style almost. Um, just just killing people with with a sword and fucking. It was crazy. I like how they started off right there, and um, actually before the time jump, we pick up after the events of Infinity War, Tony's floating in space with Nebula, <laughs> it was pretty cool, they were playing that game where you just you know, shoot the, the fucking thing, I don't know what's it called, the foo foosball I guess, or whatever, you know, and then he's like, you won, and Nebula's like, Okay, fun. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I, I actually like Nebula more, wow, the way they utilized her too. Holy crap, it was so effective. It was so good. Everybody just brought their A game. So just bravo to everybody, the, the whole cast. Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, um, Scarlett Johansson, <laughs> Jeremy Redder. Everybody was great. Um, yeah, so fuck. I'm just, oh man, I'm just, I'm still trying to get over what I saw. We're going we're gonna to truck through this, guys, okay? So I'm going to stay with you. Stay with me. All right, so we go back to the Avengers compound. Well, after uh, Captain Marvel shows up, she saves Tony, so that was a given. That was kind of like a prediction I had. It was, the people were saying rescue. That it was going to be Pepper Potts in the rescue app, in the rescue suit, but I was like, nah, it might as well be Captain Marvel. Maybe she's on her way to Earth and she sees them. She picks them up. Simple as that. But I think this happened after the whole... Um, post credit scene where she goes, you know, where's Fury? And they probably, you know, let her know what happened. They say, hey, you know, um, 
Iron Man is somewhere out there or whatever. And so she went looking for him. She found him. She brought the ship back. It was great. It's great reunion. Seeing Rock and Nebula, and then, and then just just fucking Robert Downey Jr. Man, this man, oh my God, this man was bored to play Iron Man. We'll get to it. Don't worry. <laughs> I mean, goddamn, I can't think of Iron Man without Robert Downey Jr.'s face. Seriously, um, him breaking down, him still still feeling that conflict within himself with Cap. Saying, where were you, Cap? It's such a powerful moment. You see, he's just so defeated and exhausted and just, just drained from the battle on Titan with Thanos losing. Seeing, you know, Peter, Park, Peter Parker just completely diminish in front of his eyes. His protege, his student, his, like, son, basically, really took a toll on him. And, it, like, that's what I loved about this movie. It just left so much room to breathe. And I was glad that, you know, it took its time. Ne never at, a, like, a snail's pace or anything like that. It just really really utilized its runtime for three hours fantastically. And I loved every minute of it. I love how they pay homage to all the other MCU films that came before it. Shit, even Thor The Dark World, which people talk shit about. But, yo, I'm glad that they used that because I don't mind it, okay? So... I want to know what you guys thought about that before we get to that. Um, so, yeah, the way they immediately, immediately, they wasted no fucking time. Just get on uh, the Guardian ship. They look at Thanos. They go to the planet that he's uh, retired in. <laughs> like, uh, I think Thor's the one says, oh, oh, Thanos has a retirement plan, you know? And I like the humor. I like the humor. I never thought it was like overbearing or just too much of that Marvel humor that just, you know, discombobulated its tone. It was, oh, what, that was a serious moment. You fucked it up with that uh, Marvel humor. Why? It was, nope. I actually thought it was well utilized and sprinkled well throughout, you know. And you kind of need, needed that, like, moment of levity uh, for moments like that. So, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. So they go on the planet. Thanos is retired. And I remember reading about that or hearing about that in the Infinity Gauntlet, I think. After he did the snap, he basically became like a fucking farmer. So we saw the end of Infinity War. He has his armor on a scarecrow. And, yeah, the the stones, the Infinity Stones, there's a lot of damage on him. But it wasn't because of, you know, when he snapped his fingers. Like, it wasn't that. He actually took damage because... He used the stones to destroy it. He destroyed it. And he tells him that. And he said that it is inevitable or something. He feels like a Agent Smith. It is inevitable, Mr. Anderson. You know what I mean? And I'm like, what? And Thor just fucking cuts his head off. And you're just left like, like, oh, my God. Where do we go from here? You know, like, God. That, just, that, that beginning was just amazing. <laughs> amazing. It exceeded all expectations and just surprises. There was a lot of surprises in this film, which I really enjoyed. Um, and Thor was like, I aim for the head this time. <laughs> Fucking. So we jump five years. We did a time jump. This is where things get interesting. We see where everybody's at. Um, Cap is doing those like AA meetings for the survivors. You see the just the state of the earth. It's like a ghost planet. You heard of ghost towns? It's a fucking ghost planet, yo. Hashtag that ghost planet. <laughs> it's like unheard of, you know. Uh, and Black Widow's just there contemplating she to have purpose. And, and yo, Captain Marvel got a fucking hairdo. What? I I dug it. And that's another thing. I like how they utilize Captain Marvel here. I think she was utilized very, very well. And you know what? She had more personality in this film than Captain Marvel. Now, I did not, I, I'm not one of those people that like hated Captain Marvel or didn't like it. I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was fine. Could have been way better. And I felt like Brie Larson's acting was lacking, you know. Here, though, because she was utilizing, you know, certain scenes and moments, I just loved the way the Russo brothers directed her character and weaved her in in here. It just, it just made more sense. It was it's and cool, you know. So uh yeah. <laughs> I really dug a character here. Um my god, yeah, so 
everyone's in dismay. Everyone's, everyone's, some people are in dismay. Some people are already moved on. And we see Tony, he has a daughter. Wow. That was great seeing that. So Tony, you know, moved on from the events. And then uh, Pepper, you know, he, he started a life in the cabin with Pepper. It was great seeing that. And, you know, then we get uh, Scott Lang coming back to the picture. And then he gets out of the quantum realm. He's in a fucking warehouse. Um, it was interesting because I, I always predicted it would be Ghost, but she's nowhere to be found here. So, okay, whatever. You know, I thought it would be her that would free him out of the quantum realm. Maybe she survived the Thanos snap or the decimation. Um, but no, he got out uh, randomly, I guess, because the rat activated something. I don't know. It was just by luck, by sheer luck. And what was five hours for him was five years. So he just, he's like, what the fuck? He comes out and... You know, it looks like The Last of Us. If you play that game, The Last of Us, like, there's just grass growing on the fucking streets. It's like a post-apocalypse. Apocalypse just happened, pretty much. And, um, yeah, so... And he immediately goes to the memorial sites to see his daughter's name. Because that's the one thing that really mattered. Now, I love that. That they honed in on that, because, you know, that's the heart of the Ant-Man films, is the relationship between Scott Lang and his daughter. And I love that... They focused on that, so that's great. Like, they just props to the, to the Russo brothers. They, they know, you know, how to develop these characters. They really know and pay respect to the other directors that, you know, worked on these characters in previous films. I really like that. So, um, he sees that she's alive. She's grown up now. She's not, was it a little Kaylee? I, th I believe that's her name, Kaylee, anymore. So, that was a great, um, tender moment, you know, him reuniting with her. And then, you know, he makes his way back to the compound. He gives Cap and um, Black Widow hope. And then we meet Hulk. <laughs> or should I say Bruce Hulk or Banner Hulk or Hulk Banner. We'll call him Dr. Hulk Banner, okay? That's what we're calling him. And, you know, I saw a review that said there are character changes that a lot of people are not going to like. And I can see this one being one of them. But I actually, I actually quite liked it, honestly. I thought that was great. I heard a possibility. I don't know if it happens in the comics. Maybe that's where I remember hearing it from, like from a comic book source. That at some point, you know, the personality of Bruce Banner and the Hulk merge. And he's just not like, oh, angry Hulk smash. He looks like the Hulk, but he talks like Bruce Banner, a.k.a. Mark Ruffalo. And I like that. Um... Very different, very refreshing, and I like that they took that like little risk character-wise, and I dug it. It was some of the best parts of the film, honestly. It was quite amusing and hilarious and pretty cool that he figured that out. I mean, five years have passed. Why not, you know, try to, you know, work on the thing you've been working on your whole life? Might as well. You got the time, you know. And he nailed it. He said we did some sort of gamma experiment or whatever, and they merged to one. <laughs> it was great when people were taking pictures of him. He's like, yeah, hey. you know, he has the glasses on, the gray hair lines. It's great. Now I get why the Funko Pops looked like that. <laughs> Makes complete sense. Um, yeah. So then Tony, Tony figures it out how to uh, travel back through time using the quantum realm. And, but it wasn't easy at first. The sales pitch, you know, Ant-Man. And I like that they referenced Back to the Future, which is so funny. I like the banter about time travel with, um, what is it? They mentioned the Terminator, even Time Cop. What the fuck? <laughs> like all these uh, time travel movies. You know, Hot Tub Time Machine, which was hysterical, you know? Uh, yeah. And Tony figures it out. I like when Tony came back. And gave Cap his shield and the great heart to heart moment within the characters. And I like that they're putting their you know differences aside from Civil War. And I can't stress this enough how important it is to have watched the entire MCU. And we'll get to why. Man, I'm so glad I, I really rewatched most of them, you know, the, the even Thor the Dark World, which we'll get to, man. Um, so then they start assembling the Avengers and we find Thor. Here's another 
you know, I will admit, I was like, really? You with Thor? He's just, he has, like, a bare belly like me? <laughs> the Thor, the god of thunder, you know, <laughs> drinking, you know, beer. And has a big belly. He's just like, he has, like, this, I don't even know how to describe it, man. This hobo, the you know, braided beard thing going on. <laughs> and we see Korg. Oh, I love that, though. We see Korg and Meek hanging out in his little dojo, little rundown shack he has, and they're fucking playing... I believe Fortnite. Everybody's fucking playing that game, I guess. And um, Valkyrie, it was great seeing her. And he built his little um, Asgard paradise. And I believe there were no way, like, uh, Odin was and how he died. He said this could be Asgard. Asgard is the people. So makes sense that he went that route. <laughs> I don't know about the whole beer belly. I, I would take uh, – well, I guess it does kind of make sense because, you know, when we first meet Thor in the first one, he was this cocky guy, like, another one. He was always drinking fucking wine. Yeah, so he always thought himself like a rock star. So I guess it does kind of make sense, you see. But at first, it was a little drawing scene him with the CGI uh, belly. I was just like, what the fuck are you doing here? But it served his character well, and especially those moments where you can see he may be the god of thunder, but he weeps and cries like a human, like a mortal. You know, there's no shame in that. The rocket calls him out on it. And Hulk, too. So Hulk is like, I was there for you, Bal. You know, like, come on, get your shit together. And I, I really like that. I love the formation, getting them all back together. And they built the quantum realm suits. And a lot of this, the, the footage they used was misleading. In the trailer, they, <laughs> they actually did scenes you know, fake scenes to misguide us all in the fucking trailer. Now that I'm thinking about it, um, yeah, there's quite a few shit, quite a few stuff in the trailer. Like, one example I can think of was, uh, I, yes, when Scott Lang shows up at the gate, in the trailer, Scarlett Johansson's hair was blonde, I believe. Not, you know, red with the blonde highlight tips. Because that was a giveaway. You know, that was a giveaway of that time has passed. So, yeah, marketing is genius here, and I'm okay with that. You know, people that bitch about, oh, they're manipulating us with fake footage. Ah, whatever. It's fucking awesome. It was, <laughs> it surprised me. It kept me on my toes, which I love. You know, this review is going to go pretty long. All right, we're already in the 23 minute mark shortly. Fuck it. You know, just, I got to get, I got to talk about all this stuff, guys. So, um, yeah, so we, we get to the time traveling stuff, which was pretty cool. It was like, like I said, paying homage to all the Marvel films that came out before. They had relevance, and it was important. It was so cool going back like to the first Avengers. I like how they uh, separated their groups, and one group went to the Avengers 2012. One group went to uh, Vortimere 2014. And also when, uh, I forgot the name of the planet where the uh, Will was to obtain the Power Stone, which is, oh, man, it's crazy. And then, uh, was it, oh, Rocket and Thor went to Asgard for the Aether for Jane, and uh, that was 2013, I believe. So the everybody was everywhere, you know, and then it was cool seeing the ancient one back. I was, it was so cool seeing all these characters back. Even those minor ones that were just like, ah, oh, could have used more character development. They got a moment to shine here, which I thought was so effective. Like the ancient one, like Tilda Swan. I was like, it's a great moment when she realized um, all that, you know, faith and hope that she put into her protege, Doctor Strange. She realized, like, when that moment Banner said that he willingly gave the stone, like, oh my God, like, you know. The student has become the master. He did that, he did that for a reason. And, uh, you know, I saw it as that, that respect, like that trust of, you know, of her student or Dr. Strange. And she was like, yeah, here, take it. And then I, I love the explanation that, that small, you know, exposition dump <laughs> where she was like, you have to bring the stones back. And it, and it, it all made sense. You, you had to bring back what you took. Otherwise, that reality would just cease to exist. It would just fucking crumble in itself and all that. It was Pretty cool. Um, oh my god. Seeing Cap get on the, the elevator, and you think <laughs> you think Cap is gonna go, oh, the winter soldier, we're gonna have another repeat of that elevator fight, which was fucking epic. 
um, because you saw crossbones, well, pre-crossbones, and the Hydra fucking people there, you know, charading as shield, and I love when he's like, Hell Hydra, and they just, <laughs> they just fucking give him the Tesseract, which is fucking great, I love that moment, I love that moment when Ant-Man gave, um, 2012 Iron Man, uh, you know, cardiac arrest, small little heart attack, <laughs> that was a great moment, and Loki takes the, the fucking Tesseract and just disappears, so, oh, wait, wait, so, my mistake. Cap got the mind stone. I keep forgetting. Loki's scepter is the is the mind stone. Yes. All right. And so <laughs> Loki gets the fucking Tesseract. So that plan backfires. And I love um, future Cap versus past Cap. So it's pretty cool watching them go toe to toe. But the CGI is oh my god. CGI was extraordinary. Like the way they just match these scenes and it's just oh my god, it's, it's orgasmic to watch. It was fucking amazing. Um. The interesting thing was with War Machine and Nebula. Nebula, yes. When they're on that planet, they ambush Quill with this, you know, uh, come and get your old love epic intro and shit. <laughs> and Thanos, this is where this is where it gets fucking crazy. This is start getting this is where it starts getting buck wild. Uh, the <laughs> the past Nebula is still no loyal to Thanos. That's on his ship. It was great to see Ebony Maw. What the fuck? The Black Order was back. Of course, it will be there. Um, yeah, because of her little, like, I don't know, insight, like, eye thing where she could, you know, foresee the holograms. She could, you could see what she sees. So it fucking made sense. That <laughs> it made sense of the future. Nebula would, you know, fuck up the plan, but not willingly. You know, it just, just shit just interfered, you know. It was like... Getting bad cell phone reception and it's just interfering with something else like electronically or, or some shit, you know. There's like a time paradox, so that was crazy. And then Thanos is like, and he sees everything. He sees everything that future Nebula has saw through the eye of the past Nebula. And I thought that was fucking brilliant. And he's 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 like, it, Thanos is not even shocked or anything. He was like satisfied. Like, yes, you know, I won. You know, even when he got his head cut off, like, yes, I served my purpose. Destiny has been fulfilled, you know. Man, fucking Josh Brolin is Thanos. Holy fuck. It was great seeing him in that tight armor. I was wondering how, why, how, you know, like, it all made sense now. You know, seeing those little teasers and trailers, like how they, man, man. <laughs> um, but he, you know, he takes hold of future Nebula, and she gets swapped out with the past Nebula. This is when shit starts getting crazy. Um, and I I would say I felt the slow pace, and it was during the part when Iron Man goes into 1970, I believe, to to uh, take the test rack, because they had to do plan B, because Loki fucking ran off with it, he teleported somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and I, I do like the general moment between him and his dad. You know, Howard Stark. It was cool seeing that. Yo, the CGI. Oh, my God. So, the CGI cures old age, people. That's where we need to go. we we'll get old as fuck. You just got to go down to Hollywood and just have them CGI our faces. <laughs> like, like fucking Michael Douglas. Oh, my God. Did you see him with the long hair? That was fucking crazy. He looked like a hippie. A, a smart-ass hippie, you know? And it was cool seeing Captain America take the pin particles. And, of course, Honorable Cap. My boy Cap. He had a chance to reunite with Peggy in her office. But he's like, no, 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 fam. I'm about that honor, so that, I, I love that. And I love the moments between Iron Man and his dad. You know, like, it was great. It was great. You know, Howard. My name is Howard Potts, and you're Howard Stark. <laughs> I love that little um, interchange between them, between those Robert Downey Jr. and that actor. He's from Mad Men. He's, really, he's a really good actor who plays his dad. Um, so they get all the stones. This, this is where the end game pays off, like spectacularly like all oh, shit like i couldn't pick up like i couldn't pick my job off the fucking floor like what it happened it all went down Is he, all right so you know the iron man assembles his own gauntlet he assembles it he puts the stones in it everything's going according to plan does uh, hulk is the only one that could do it because of the gamma radiation so he, he takes it oh shit what the fuck before i even get to that hold up we gotta talk about black widow's dad what what the f I did not see that coming. I totally 
totally thought Hawkeye would die. I was like, yo, Hawkeye's going to die because he has nothing to live for. He's ruining. He's been mass murdering fucking people like Punisher, you know, Hanzo Atari sword style. You know, like fucking, yeah. And, nah, it was, because they had to go to Vordemir. Of course, you got the Red Skull there floating about. You got to make the sacrifice. And at first, you know, a little bit big. I thought it was a little hokey that uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye were kind of like, Doing a little race where they were trying to see who gets to kill each other first. But then you felt it. Like when Black Widow's like, let me go. And she she gave that to Hawkeye. That chance of him. A slim chance of him making it out of life. Just so he can be reunited with his family that he lost. Despite all the, you know, the dark path that he went. And I love that exchange between them. When she said that, who am I to judge you? For all the dark, you know, stuff that you have done. Because, you know, Black Widow, she's had a troubled past. She has red, red on her ledger. But it makes so much sense why she would do it. Especially the state her character was in. You know, she just, she felt like she needed to do it. And it was just. And she lands in the same spot Gomorrah did. It was fucking heartbreaking. Scarlet Joe, why are you hitting me? You know, that was the first shot of the arrow to the heart, you know. I was like, fuck, man. Kill Scarlet Joe. That's my bed. That's my wife. <laughs> no, seriously though, like that, I was just at a loss for words. So, yeah, Flint gets hold of the Soul Stone, same way Thanos did. Um, damn, this is the sacrifice. So that that really struck an emotional chord to me. <laughs> I must say, that's when the tears started. You know, you know, it all went down from hill. It went downhill from there. So. Then, you know, okay, now we get to Hulk doing the snap. The damn gauntlet. He almost kills him, but he survives. He survives because he's the fucking Hulk. He's still the Hulk. You know, then fucking Nebula from the past. Because she takes, you know, um, the other Nebula's, like, orange, like, paint fucking thing or whatever. Puts on herself. She, she passes off as her. And she, she fucking brings... Thanos from the past into the into the present to the future or whatever with his fucking massive ship and oh what the fuck and he just completely completely annihilates destroys the Avengers compound he just goes to shit and you know this is when the audience was like what the, what the fuck and that's when Thanos um, beams himself down like Star Trek style. And it's like, yo, what up, fam? You got, you got something that I love, that I need. Like, what the fuck? Oh my god! Woo! And then, the, and then it happens. The Marvel Holy Trinity. That's right. It was great seeing uh, Thor uh, have his hammer. So they go at it with Thanos. Uh, the Chitauri's hot on Hawkeye's trail. It's like everything. Things are tensing up. And one like this, fucking white knuckling the whole time, like. Like I'm, like I'm in the like highest fucking roller coaster of my life, and we're just going neck deep into the devil's anus. We're just like holding on, just hold on. <laughs> um, yo, from there on, it was just epic moment after epic moment after just what what is even happening? I can't believe this is happening. I am so glad I'm still alive to see this happening. What the fuck? Is my audience just lost it. They went nuts. They're like the last like, 45 minutes or hour. That third act is the best fucking third act I've ever seen in my life. Like, easily. Easily. It just, like, everything comes to the head. Um, you know, Iron Man, Thor, and Cap are not doing so well, obviously, against Thanos because he has his armor on. He has his, like, double bladed Titan fucking sword, which just looks so badass. He's tuning them up. The, 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 this is where I, I almost stood up to clap. This I love this moment. We finally see that Cap is fucking worthy. You go back to Age of Ultron, fam. You see that Cap moved Thor's hammer during that you know the little party scene. And I love Thor's smug look. He's like, I knew you were worthy. I always knew. You know, I love that shit. Love that shit. Fucking wield the hammer because he's fucking worthy. Because he's fucking Cap. America, you know, he just starts going at Thanos. He's doing like this fucking double combo, triple combo, fucking quadruple combo overkills with his fucking Thor's hammer. 
And <laughs> this is this shield. It's fucking glorious. This is what we live for, people. Oh, man. Then Thanos starts just wailing on his shield. Just fucking destroys almost his whole shield. And it seems like all hope is lost. They're defeated. Cap is there strapping up his, what is left of his fucking shield. And I'm just like, I'm just like, oh, my God. Yo, we're fucked. Like, you know, that moment where you think we're all fucked. We're done. It's over. Game over. Is it? <laughs> and then... The most glorious thing, the, the greatest gift to mankind happens in this moment where, I don't know, we were all dying to see this and hear this. You know, Thanos, he has his his mothership up there and, he, you know, fucking Black Order beams down with Ebony Maw. And, you know, he got those those like dog looking things from the Wakanda battle, I forgot what they're called, the Bloodhounds, whatever. And he even got new fucking mech like looking battle tanks and we're like what the fuck like it was crazy you know just like oh my god no 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 and you're thinking wait the, the snap had to work it, it had to work and it does you start seeing all the doctor strange you know dimensional portals portals opening you hear fucking like yo cat what do you want is there some shit like that or are you on your left and you see everyone come back everyone is fucking oh like it's so fucking glorious it is it's a sight to behold. I want to experience this moment like 10, 20, 30, 50 more times. I don't care how many times. Infinite amount of times. It was it was great. And Cap finally says the magic words. Avengers assemble! Yeah, my, my, my boy. Loved it. <laughs> you see Ant-Man and Wasp in action. You see fucking Valkyrie on a Pegasus. On a horse. Just, just whooping ass. You see Pepper Potts with the rescue fucking iron suit. What? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's just, you know, like the whole time. <laughs> oh, man. I was I was in tears. I was, like, cheering. I was crying. I was, like, oh, like, so many emotions. This movie brought so many emotions out of me that I think was possible. But it did. And, oh, man, that battle was extraordinary. How the hell did they pull it off? Just, it was, fuck, what, 10 years in the making? The Russo brothers? <laughs> Fucking bravo. Bravo. I don't care how long this video goes. It's going to go as long as we can go. I hope you guys like a raw, unedited, uncut, you know, review. Just just recapping the whole shit because, you know, we got to talk about everything. All the moments, you know? And, um, <laughs> God, that, that battle's crazy. Iron Man, I mean Iron Man. Spidey swings back in. I love that genuine moment. As I started welling up, I started crying. The little tears started. Iron Man sees Spider Man. You know, you know how Peter Parker is. He's always trying to over-explain things. Like, oh, Mr. Stark, you know, yeah. Last time we saw each other, it was crazy, and then uh, you know, I disappeared. And he's like, you shut up, kid. Just, just shut up and hug me, hug me, boy. I'm your dad. Hug me, boy. <laughs> so, I love that moment. Oh man, uh, Gamora came to her senses. Past Gamora, I I thought that was genius how they brought Gamora back, uh, without necessarily bringing her like back. You know, from you get what I'm saying, right? Uh, because it's the past Gamora, and the Quell was like, "Oh my god, you got needed nuts," which makes total fucking sense that that would be her reaction because you know, unfortunately, they never you know, <laughs> and that's that's not the same Gamora. But there's still time, so I like that, you know. Leave things open for that. Then Captain Marvel shows up, decimates that fucking mothership. I'm like, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, Captain Marvel. We need you, girl. You know, go on, get down, you know. <laughs> so she just starts manhandling everybody. It was great. Then we see, like, the epic, like, uh, avenge women, like, epic shots of, like, Scarlet Witch. And fucking like Nebula, Gomorra, like in Valkyrie, Captain Marvel. Like, yeah, it was like a fuck yeah, women power. And I was all for it. I was like, yeah, yeah. you go, you whip that ass. You whip that ass. <laughs> like, fucking loved it. Oh, I got my little, my little Avengers, you know, little bucket. I'm so glad I got this. Still smells fresh. From all the popcorn and all the epicness and all this. Look at this. Look at this. Look. look at that. I, I ain't got to show that off. But yeah, of course, I kept the cup too. Kept the cup right here. With popcorn on it. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, that, that battle. Pfft. 
my god. Can't wait to see that in IMAX 3D uh, tomorrow. Yeah, that's going to be something. And then it happens. You know, they're getting overwhelmed. They're trying to get the, you know, Iron Man going with the Six Infinity Stones back to <laughs> Scott's uh, shitty fucking van where they had the Quantum Realm, like, portal there. Because they got to get the uh, Six Stones back, like, uh, they actually want to explain to Banner. You know, and it's, it's just, like, nail-biting suspense because... You know, Thanos would just not give up. This motherfucker does not want to give up. <laughs> no matter what. No matter how many Avengers you fucking throw Captain Marvel at him. He's trying to headbutt her. He's not even fucking working. He don't care. And, yo, it was crazy. I was like, what the fuck? Like, at one point, he almost killed, uh, like, Thor and Cap. There was a, so many close calls. So many. And, you know, it was cool. That moment with Doctor Strange where Iron Man sees him. They make eye contact. And he tells him, like, is this the one chance you said or was this is it? And he said he can't tell him. And the reason why he can tell him is because, fan. The reason why Dr. Strange can tell him is because, and the, the reason why he said spare him, because he knew Iron Man was going to be that sacrifice. <laughs> it happens. Iron Man puts on the gauntlet, snaps. He says, I am... Iron Man. Ah, just give me a minute. Oh my god. He says it. Snaps. Um, Thanos is wiped out. His army is wiped out. And, um, Tony Stark dies. I wasn't ready for that. Uh, Iron Man dies. Does that hero sacrifice? I thought it was going to be Cap, but nope, it was Iron Man. Uh, it's just, it breaks my heart. I'm trying to hold it together. I think, I I'm, I feel it, like I'm going to shed a tear, but I think I shed all the tears in the movie theater already, honestly. But I feel my eyes welling up already. Um, <laughs> fuck, man. Oh. Heartbreaking moment. You see Peter, you know, going to him like he did in Infinity War. Like, no, Mr. Stark, please, just, uh, fuck, man. And Pepper Potts, and everybody's just devastated. Round of applause for Robert Downey Jr. Plays Iron Man. The granddaddy of the MCU. R.I.P. R.I.P. R.I.P., buddy. <sighs> that way. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. I'm going to need this tonight. Here's to you, Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. Your sacrifice did not go in vain. You're the hero that we needed. Here's to you, buddy. Mmm. Oof. I'm probably going to kill this bottle in there. I'm going to need it. Whew. Oh, I love Crown Royal Apple. Anyway. So they have the funeral. Everyone's reunited. Cap um, goes to bring back the Infinity Stones. He comes back as an old man. Which makes sense because... He, like he said, he wanted uh, to experience what Tony had. So he goes back in the past, and the film ends with him rekindling the relationship he left off with Peggy Carter. And it's a beautiful, heartfelt, just genuine moment, as well-deserved for Cap. He leaves a shield for Falcon, which I'm okay with. I don't know why people wanted it for Bucky, but, but you know, like, Bucky feels too burdened at the moment, like, he feels like he's unworthy, and rightfully so within his character, because, you know, the other people, it's the people he killed as the Winter Soldier, so if anybody deserves or worthy of the shield, it's Falcon. You know, the Falcon was never compromised, that's the way I see it. And, so I salute you, Captain America. I don't know if that was Chris Evans, you know, like, old CGI. He looked like an actual old man that resembled Chris Evans, like, how he would look, which was it's kind of freaky if you think about it, but yeah. Just perfect ending.
perfect ending. I uh, love seeing Spider-Man or Peter Parker. Seeing that <laughs> his boy back in in high school that made me tear up. Just a funeral overall. The heart of Tony Stark. This proof that Tony Stark has a heart. Everybody's back, so this is how we get the Avengers back, and it was wrapped up perfectly. I, I honestly could not have asked for a more satisfying conclusion than the one we got, and I cannot wait to experience it again. And this time I'll bring fucking tissues, like, <laughs> or maybe I'll just pre game and just drink half of this bottle and go see it again so I could be well prepared, you know. Oh man, for just a floodgate of emotions, people. That's all it is, but it's also a celebration of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Just fantastic. Just round of applause for everybody. I loved it. Just what did you guys think? Comment down below. Have you seen Endgame opening night? Let's talk about it. <clears throat> for those that came in the non-spoiler, for the non-spoiler portion, I hope you guys don't read the comments. I should have said that. But y'all should know better. But anyway, yeah. If you've seen Endgame, what did you think about it? What's your rating? Where does this rank up in the MCU? What was the most emotional moment for you? Mine was easily Iron Man, his sacrifice. Just, wow. Yep, so that's going to wrap it up, guys. I am going to go celebrate. Not celebrate, but I guess drown my sorrows like fucking Thor. But the only difference is I already have a beer belly, so I don't got to worry about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I loved every minute of it. Post your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of Avengers Endgame. Did it live up to all the hype and expectations? Was it worth it? it was it worth all the 10 or 11 year investment that we had in all the Marvel films? I think it was. It paid off wonderfully in all spades. So, yeah, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching as always. If you stuck around this long, I love you. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, we're in the end game now, people. <laughs> if you're finding my channel for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like if you want. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Whatever it takes.